I just wanted to take a quick second to point out just how beautiful my machine makes the holographic fabric look. It's just reflecting all of the rainbows and I am so happy I chose this fabric for the lining of the inside of the bag. Welcome back to Angie Seams with Pockets and I have a really exciting video for all of you today. I am going to be making my wife's Yule present. If any of you guys watch me on TikTok, you would know that um, I have a couple videos on there about Dungeons and Dragons. My wife is my DM and she's a little obsessed with it in like the best way possible. As my gift to her, I'm going to be making her a 20-sided dice bag and I am so excited. I've never made something like this before. This is going to be my first time making a 20-sided bag, um, but I really hope she likes it. So without further ado, I think we should get started. I will be using a d20 model to figure out where each number goes and which direction it faces and then I have an embroidery stabilizer, I have felted interfacing, I'll be using a holographic fabric for the lining and then for the outside I'll be using a black faux leather. To start off I will need an equilateral triangle. I'm going to fold a piece of paper just to get a nice crisp edge and I will draw out a line to the length that I want my triangle to be. Um, in this case, I want my triangle to be at six inches. Um, I actually want it to be five inches of in length, but I want to make sure that when I'm cutting these out, I'm giving myself a seam allowance of half an inch. So I'm measuring it out of six. So I have that line. I'm gonna define these a little more. And then what I do from there is I fold my paper in half and it's a little hard to see but if you have a nice light source you connect your lines together make sure that it's right on the line fold it give yourself a crease unfold it and then from the edge of where I measured my six inches I will put my six inches again and then I will meet the edge of my ruler at six inches on this center line just like this and then do the same thing on the other side with that you have your equilateral triangle and then to build my seam allowance I'm gonna measure up a half an inch from every line so I have my triangle cut out here and then I also decided to cut out another one I'll be cutting out the cardboard to give my die a little bit more structure because this is harder than any of the fabric materials I have and I don't want the D20 to kind of squish together so I'll be cutting out 20 of my lining and 20 of my interfacing because these will be on the inside and then because I'll be using an embroidery hoop and this triangle doesn't fit I mean I could I guess make you like this but I want to make sure that it's fully stabilized when it's in my embroidery hoop I'll be cutting out a rectangle fabric and then tracing the triangle finding the center point and then embroidering it on and then cutting it out after I finish embroidering the numbers on to save you the trouble of watching me cut out you know 40 triangles 40 rectangles rectangles and 20 cardboard I will go ahead and get it all cut up and I will see you in a second so a couple hours later I am finally done cutting everything out so the next step is to embroider the numbers if you've never done embroidery before one thing you should know is that you should absolutely have some stabilizer to back up your work the stabilizer is like a very dense felt that's very thin and as you can see when I pull on it it doesn't stretch in any direction so this means that your design will also not stretch this prevents puckering this prevents um, warping in your design so it just kind of makes your design come out all really nice and neat and then I have my fashion fabric which in this case is my faux leather and then I'm going to um, loosen my embroidery hoop to the furthest it will go so it's easier to apply the top part because I'm, I'll be cutting out a triangle from the design about like this um, I want to make sure that there is extra space up here in case my design is a little higher so stabilizer kind of centered um, the fashion fabric kind of a little higher up when I put it on the hoop I like to kind of secure two corners and then kind of force the other corners down and then when everything is pulled taut I will use a tool to tighten the embroidery hoop as tight as it will go and then following my guide again I just want to make sure that my triangle fits so I actually made a small hole in my pattern exactly in the center and then I put the 
um, dot to the center, make sure that there is enough fabric for when I cut out the triangle. And then I'll take a water soluble marker to make that mark. I don't need it very dark, I just need to be able to find it when I um, embroider the number on in the machine. And with that, my first embroidery frame is ready to go. So before I begin, I've already changed my foot to the embroidery foot. Um, and I've threaded my machine with a silver thread and my bobbin currently has a black thread. To make the 20-sided dies, I will need numbers 1 through 20. To uh, program the number, I will go into my fonts, I will select the one that I want to do, and I want to do number 4, which is kind of like this fancier font, and then I will change to the number selection, and I will start with just number 1. So I'm going to press set, I'm going to take my embroidery hoop, pop it in, and then I will edit end, move it over. I move the needle just a little bit to see how it matches until it hits the mark dead on. Put my presser foot down, then I press the embroidery button, and then once my light turns green, that means the embroidery machine is ready to go, I double check the placement, double check that it is the number I want to embroider, and then I just press the green button and the machine can start. And now that my first number is finished, I just have to do this 20 more times. The next step will be to cut them out, and to do so, I've actually gone ahead and taken my pattern piece and cut out a cardboard with the center point kind of punched out. So the center point of the triangle is about an inch and three quarters from the edge. So what I'll be doing, initially is I'll be finding that center point line on the fabric. I'll be marking out that straight point and then lining up my triangle this way, tracing out the triangle, and then cutting it out. This will ensure that all of my numbers are centered and straight on the dice bag once it's completed. So I'll be lining up the center of the triangle with that point and then making sure that the edge of the triangle lines up with the line that I just drew. This way this, the triangle will be the same direction each time and we won't have any where the number is, you know, completely crooked. So I'll trace out the rest of the numbers with these triangles and then I'll cut them out and after that we can meet back here and I can show you the next step. Alrighty, so I got everything finally fully cut out. So my next step is going to be taking the lining and the interfacing and attaching the two of them together. It is a little hard to see, but the interfacing does have these rigid little bumps here that are actually dried up glue. Um, this is an iron-on interfacing, so what I'll be doing is I'll be taking the lining pieces, lining them up with the pattern of the interfacing, and then ironing the two pieces together. Right now, the lining is very, very stretchy. You can stretch it a lot of different directions um, because it's a four-way stretch knit fabric, and then the interfacing does not have any stretch to it. So. Attaching the two together, the lining will no longer be a stretch fabric. I'll be pulling out my ironing board and my iron and I'll be attaching all of these together. So now that the lining fabric and the interfacing are attached together, um, you can see that they don't easily come apart because of the iron on um, kind of like adhesive that the interfacing had. And also you can see how the lining is no longer stretchy. It has a little bit of a stretch if you pull in certain directions, but overall it's a pretty solid piece and it's not as stretchy as it used to be. So for the next step of the project, I'll actually be working really closely with my dice model here. Um, I want to add in a zipper that kind of goes around around the edge of four of the five sides so that it can flip open and you can go into the inside, hence why I have the inside as such a pretty fabric. So to explain it just a little better what the heck I'm talking about, um, if you can see the pinker lines here, so the zipper is going to go right there, it's going to go um, across 20 and 2, 8 and 10, 16 and 3, and 9 and 6. So 14 and 4 are going to be connected together as kind of like a hinge. I also went ahead and I marked the side that will have the zipper face that I need to leave open on every single one of the ones that I mentioned just a second before um, because I know that if I don't mark it now I will absolutely forget that it is something that I need to do so this way I have the three line reminder that's like hey Angie don't stitch the side closed until the zipper is put in. 
So I'm using black thread and a Teflon foot because I am working with leathery fabrics that can occasionally stick to the foot or the machine itself. Um, and then I'm lining up the um, right sides of both pieces to each other. And I'm stitching at about quarter of an inch. I'm gonna cut close to where the two stitches intersect so this way there isn't a lot of bulk. I'm also gonna reinforce the corners just a little bit with some extra stitches. This way my corners are nice and secured and then I'll flip everything over. So now I take my little cardboard piece and this might use a little bit of um, stretching but I'm basically gonna shove it in here. So this kind of gives it a little bit of that body that we're currently missing. And I'll be closing these up off camera with a ladder stitch. And in the meantime, I'll be finishing up the rest of my triangles. I finally have all of the pieces sewn together individually into these perfect little triangles. Now the next step will be to put all of these together. I kind of started doing that already with this set right here. It's a little easier for me to do a lot of this stuff off camera because it's such precise little detailed work. The way I'm attaching these together is I'm using a heavy duty button thread which is really really thick and does not break and I'm looping it through the stitches in the seam so it creates like this perfect piece um, and I accidentally screwed up and I sewed 3 and 16 together so I'm actually going to be making that my hinge. I'll go ahead and finish putting all the triangles together off camera. So the next step after getting the bag all um, sewn together is to embroider some thick yarn and I'm using a nice big twist kind of 100% um, acrylic. I'm using a 100% acrylic big twist like really bulky yarn for this part. I'm basically going to be braiding it into the seams to kind of clean up the edges of the bag because in some areas if you kind of stretch or pull you can still see some of that silver of the lining peeking through. So as you can see comparing the embroidered edge, you do get a little bit of silver showing through in some of the areas, but for the most part it is nice and neat versus, you know, the edges that are not cleaned up yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this embroidery technique on the rest of the bag and we'll meet up here in a moment. So I finally have all of the embroidery done. As you can see, it really nicely hides any of the lining that was showing through. So now my last step is to find a way to close the bag. Originally I was thinking of doing a zipper but um, when I tried to sew it on it ended up looking really really bad so I kind of you know changed my mind on that and I was talking with a friend who suggested that I might be able to use some magnets which I thought was a great idea and when I went to the store in hopes of finding jewelry magnet clasps that I could maybe sew into these three corners I ended up finding something even better which are these jewelry buckles they are really strong so I won't be worried about the bag coming apart when I you know roll it or try to play with it. This isn't a toy, but you know, if you have a 20-sided dice-shaped bag, you're gonna want to roll it and see what numbers you can get. I'm gonna be hand-stitching these into the edges just like this. They will hopefully be able to come together and just kind of clasp to each other and stay shut. All right, and with those buckles on, I am finally done with my dice bag. As you can see, if I throw my bag around, it doesn't come undone. And then it's also super easy to just go in here and pop these buckles open so I can access the inside just like that. And now my bag is ready for its epic montage. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and maybe you can use my tutorial to make your own dice bag. There's a lot of things I would change because this is the first time making this. I didn't really know what I was doing going in. Um, so with the second bag, if I ever decide to make this again, I definitely have a lot of things that I would change. But overall, I am very happy with how this turned out and I really hope my wife loves it. May your new year be a critical success. And with that, go forth and sew my lovelies. I will see you all in my next video.